Greetings from Mount Olive Lutheran Church on this fifth week of Lent. It is so good to be together once again. I'm Pastor Glenn Munson, one of the pastors here at Mount Olive. And with me in the sanctuary today is our director of music and worship, Travis Beck, who will be leading the hymns. Um, joining us remotely from home is our preacher for today, intern Pastor Luke Hollander, and also our assisting minister, Jill Michelson. Again, welcome. We are so glad you have joined us. Once again, I remind you that because of this technology, you can pause and uh, take a break, go back, watch again, uh, do what you need to do. And in case you have not yet prepared for communion, we will be serving communion today. So we encourage you to find a small bit of bread or cracker, grape juice or wine, and have that ready for the appropriate time. Also, you may want to find a candle and light that also in your own home in much the same way we light candles as we begin worship here in the sanctuary. Um, because of the heightened um, concerns about spreading the COVID-19 virus, after today we will be producing uh, worship pieces individually, either at home or in the sanctuary. Um, and then we will be editing them uh, to form a complete worship service. We are doing this to uh, reduce person-to-person -person contact uh, between staff members uh, to make sure we are keeping each other safe. As always, I encourage you to remember that you are ambassadors for Christ and you are voices of peace and love and joy in our community and I commend you to that good work. So God bless us now as we begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. 
Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary and Martha were worried. Their brother Lazarus was sick, very sick. The sisters knew Lazarus might die soon. They sent for Jesus. He loved this little family from Bethany. When Jesus heard about Lazarus, he told his disciples, This sickness will not end in death. Although Jesus was many miles away, he knew exactly what was going to happen to Lazarus. Jesus waited two days before leaving for Bethany. Then he said something which puzzled his disciples. Lazarus is dead. I'm glad I was not there so you may believe. What did these strange words mean? What was Jesus planning to do? When Jesus arrived at Bethany, Lazarus had been dead for four days. His body, wrapped in grave clothes, was in a cave-like tomb. Martha went to meet Jesus. Your brother will rise again, Jesus said. I know, in the resurrection at the last day, Martha replied. She thought she had to wait until the end of time to see Lazarus again. But Jesus meant something different. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus told Martha. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Martha believed Jesus. She knew he was the Son of God. But how could he help Lazarus? Everybody was sad because Lazarus had died. His sister Mary was crying. So were her friends who tried to comfort her. Jesus cried too. Jesus went with the people to the tomb. A large stone lay across the doorway. Take away the stone, Jesus commanded. Lord, Martha answered, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. At Jesus' command, the men took away the stone. Then Jesus prayed to his heavenly Father. Jesus was about to perform a miracle so great that people would know God sent him. Lazarus, Jesus shouted, come out. The people must have stared at the cave in amazement. Could Jesus make a dead man live? Yes. Lazarus came out of the cave, all wrapped up in grave clothes, alive. Loose him, Jesus said. Let him go. What joy there was. Tears turned to laughter. Jesus had kept his word. Lazarus was alive again. Only God's Son could give life to a dead man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. These are unsettling and deeply uncertain times. We're in the throes of a global pandemic. We may even say that we are living in the Valley of the Dry Bones. An executive order has been issued to stay at home by Governor Waltz this week. We are confronted with constant political distraction and disruption. Kids can't go to school or go out to see their friends. People are having to work from home and are struggling as they try to find new ways to operate. 
Some are facing huge economic sacrifices to contain this virus, and others are losing their jobs. Markets are rising and falling quickly. Many are experiencing unwelcome social isolation, and entire care facilities and apartments are quarantined. And there are so very many people who are sick, and many others are dying from the coronavirus. Yes, it feels like we are in the depths of the valley of dry bones. It can feel like too much, and in many ways it is too much. The truth of it is, if we get too consumed by it all, things can look bleak. Even as resurrection people, there may be a weight, a feeling, that death will have the final say in all of this. In today's Gospel reading, the tension between hope of resurrection and the finality of death is palpable. Jesus says, Your brother will rise again. And we can feel the deep pain in Martha's voice when she responds, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. As if she is leaving out, But that isn't enough. I lost my brother too early, and the pain is so deep that I can't feel hope right now. Then Jesus weeps with Mary, Martha, and their family. He is with them in their deepest pain, experiencing it alongside of them. And again, the truth of it is, death should have been the end. But Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Even they who die will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. When Jesus raises Lazarus to life, he shows that death will not have the final say. This is the ultimate hope-giving paradox. Life from death, joy shall come from pain, hope shall come from despair. The Valley of the Dry Bones text is another example of life coming from death. The people of God are in exile. They are lamenting that they feel so far from God's reach that their bones are as dried up as their hope. So the prophet Ezekiel tells a parable about the power of the Holy Spirit breathing life into the people. The Holy Spirit is pictured raising the bones from the ground reanimating them with flesh and sinew, and ultimately breathing life back into them. If we, like God's people before us, are in our own valley of dry bones, then like them, we can know for certain that God is with us. And through the Holy Spirit has the power to reanimate us and bring us back to life. Perhaps this is precisely the time we need to look for God's presence among us and watch for the Holy Spirit reanimating and breathing life back into us. And so I've invited two guests to help me report on the Spirit's work among our community in a special edition of Church News. I'm Judy George, and this is... Who am I? Georgie Judy. Georgie Judy. And we're here with a special edition of... Church Church News! News. Um, Okay, and we're here for so many things, and Mommy has a question for you. I have a question for you. And that question is, have you noticed how this crisis has brought out the best in people? Yep, and my question is, does so the whole world crash trail down and went to sleep? Today we have a special guest reporter out in the community. Do you know who our guest reporter is? Yep, it's surprising. Who's the surprise reporter? Luke? Luke Hollander. Take it away, Luke. Thanks, Georgie. I've been out and about this week looking for ways the Holy Spirit is breathing life and hope into our community. This is a tough time for everyone as we've been asked to make hard decisions for the health and safety of others. 
The great news is so many organizations, people, and businesses are rising to the challenge. Many restaurants have responded by offering curbside pickup or delivery to doorstep in order to help stop the spread of COVID-19. While others have made the hard decision to close their doors entirely, like Fiddlehead Coffee did earlier this week. Instead, they are offering free delivery of whole bean coffee to anyone within 20 miles of Rochester. In their own words, it has been an excruciating week, but one punctuated with immense kindness and support. And here's another hopeful sign. While local businesses are making responsible decisions, people are finding ways to financially support them so that they can bounce back at the end of this. The YMCA is a great example. With their doors closed to members, the Y realized they had the capacity to be a community response hub. So even though Y members can't access the facilities, many are continuing to pay their monthly dues in order to support much needed services throughout this crisis. Yes, generosity is a major theme right now as people make sacrifices for the greater good. One major way is by staying home. Even the most social among us have been self-isolating to help stop or at least slow down the spread of COVID-19. And it has been wonderful to see all of the creative ways people are keeping busy and staying connected. In our congregation, people are taking part in online dance and fitness classes, doing art projects, and puzzling. People are putting bunnies in trees and bears in windows as whole neighborhoods take part in teddy bear scavenger hunts. We're encouraging each other to get outside and be active, and we're being rewarded with uplifting sidewalk chalk messages. And people are finding new and old ways of keeping in touch from online meeting rooms to good old-fashioned letter mail. And while churches have long been perceived as resistant or slow to change, many churches around the world have been quick to find creative ways to gather, worship, and support one another. Here at Mount Olive, our sanctuary may be empty, but we remain connected through online worship and Sunday school and have been responsive and flexible with the ever-changing recommendations around COVID-19. As one local lawyer put it, I'm looking forward to all the incredible innovation we will benefit from on the other side of this, but it will be a tough road till we are there. In the meantime, people are finding ways to rise up to the present challenges by continuing to financially support their churches and other nonprofits, such as our local Channel One Food Bank, Family Promise, and the United Way, and by donating blood, which is also needed right now. So, Georgie Juji, what have we learned from this? Nothing. Actually, Georgie, I think we're learning quite a bit. We're learning about ourselves, what we take for granted, what we need to be healthy, and our capacity for handling uncertainty and change. We're learning how to slow down, how to get back to nature, and to be more intentional in our communication. And we're learning that even in the hardest times, the Holy Spirit finds creative ways to breathe new life into our midst. Back to you, Georgie. Hi, I'm Georgie Judy. And I'm Judy George, saying thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.
hearts to God who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Invigorate the church with your spirit. And bless the work of those who labor in its holy community. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and services as we work together to tighten the connections between us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Heal areas of the world ravaged by disaster, including the people of East Africa whose crops are overrun by locusts, and all nations as our emergency infrastructure is challenged by disease. Bring us courage and lead all things to new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, bless all who watch and wait, those who long for wars to cease, those who wait for immigration paperwork to finalize, the homeless seeking shelter, the home ridden seeking contact, and all those who are in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Bless the members of our Mount Olive family who are ill, grieving or recovering from injury. Bless all those who are sick, recovering, anxious, homebound, and grieving because of COVID-19. Bless all our homebound members. And bless our mission partners in Kijota, Tanzania, and Bogota, Colombia. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, bring us peace. Peace to those who did their best today, who kept doing the next thing and the next. Peace to those who were so overwhelmed that they were frozen in fear or confusion or just the exhaustion that comes from holding the unknown moment by moment. Peace to all those who were somewhere in between. Peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another at this time. Let us pray. Merciful God, we do not presume to come to your table trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat and drink the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, that we may live in him and he in us, now and forever. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. 
You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. Gathered at the Lord's table and around our own, we remember with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gifts of peace and healing on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God's love is poured out in Christ for you. Open yourselves to receive it. At this time, you may share with one another, saying, the body of Christ given for you, and also sharing the wine with one another, saying, the blood of Christ shed for you. Travis, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you are near us, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then take us by the hand into each day that lies ahead. For where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen.
Christ is with us. Thanks be to God.